Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome to The Vine, the online campus of the Wrightsville United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you've joined us for this worship service today. Now, in just a moment, a QR code will be on the screen, and there's also a link in the video description. You can use one or the other of those to take you to where you can register your attendance and also you can share with us any prayer concerns that you may have. Certainly our prayer today is that this service will be a blessing and an encouragement to you in your discipleship, in your faith journey. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I invite you to join with me as we pray together our opening prayer. The words will be on the screen. Pray with me. Jesus, as we journey with you to Jerusalem, keep us close by your side. Give us strength to follow you wherever you lead, even to the cross. Amen. Pastor Julia Hayes, one of the associate pastors here, and it's my joy to get to lead us in prayer today. Will you join me now in prayer? Holy and loving God, we thank you for gathering us together today. 
Lord, we thank you that even when we are apart physically, your spirit is big enough to unite us together. Jesus, we thank you that when you walked the earth, you opened the eyes of the blind. We come in faith today that you are still in the business of making the blind see, the deaf hear, and the lame walk. Lord, if you can do all that, we believe you can change hearts, even ours, to love and serve you. Lord, forgive us, for we have been blind to our own limitations. We have been pridefully assuming we can handle it all on our own. Give us the strength to admit that we are weak. Lord, forgive us, for we have been blind to the needs of others. We have been so committed to our view of the world as we have experienced it, that we cannot see the world for as it is for our brothers and sisters living under the shadow of poverty, racism, and oppression. Open our eyes to see what we have been missing. Lord, we pray for fresh vision for our church. We pray that we will see you more clearly than ever before. We pray that we will be able to cry like Simeon, my own eyes have seen your salvation. Oh Lord, give us eyes to see you. Give us ears to hear you. Give us soft hearts to turn and follow you. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we transition now into a time of generosity and reflection, I'd just like to remind you that you can always give to the mission of Wrightsville United Methodist Church through our website, wrightsvilleumc.org, through the mail, and through our smartphone app. Let us now continue to worship God. Wrightsville kids, I'm Pastor Julia. Today I have a game I want to play with you. So I have here a picture of a church, but you know, it doesn't really look like a church building very much. And one of the reasons is that I think it needs to have a cross on the top. Well, I think I need a helper to get that cross. So Pastor Doug, will you help me? So, Pastor Doug, I'm going to give you one of these crosses. Now, do you think you could put that there on the top of the church building? Sure. Yeah, sounds pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is one catch. Okay. Um, I need for you to do it with your eyes closed. Okay. Okay, cool. So, um, close your eyes. You know, I think he might be cheating. Okay, Bye. glasses off. That's good. Okay, close your eyes. Okay, good, good. Um, how many fingers am I holding up? I don't know. How many fingers? I don't know. Okay, I think he's good. Okay, now I need you to spin around in a circle. One more time. And once the other direction. Okay, okay, good. Okay, okay, you can stop spinning around now. Okay, follow my voice, follow my voice. And okay, now it's time to put the cross on. Um, I don't even know where the thing is. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> okay, you can, you can open your eyes now. That's not bad. That's not terrible. That's not, that's not really bad, but I think that cross is going to fall off the building. Yeah. So, how about, can you try it again, but with your eyes open this okay, time? Okay, sure. Okay. 
How about that? That was great. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Pastor Doug. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Wow, that was a whole lot easier to do with Pastor Doug when he had his eyes open, right? There's a lot of things that are a lot easier to do if we can see. You know, in the Bible, there's lots of stories where Jesus heals someone who was born blind. And Jesus opens up their eyes so that they can see. And so then they can do all sorts of things like put crosses on the top of church buildings. Well, a lot of us are born able to see, but Jesus also teaches us that sometimes there's a different kind of being blind, of not being able to see. And that's when we can't really see the things that God wants us to be able to see. Maybe we can't notice when someone really needs a friend or when someone needs help. Something like that can show that we're having trouble seeing God. But Jesus came to fix that for us too. And Jesus gives us new eyes so that we can see all the wonderful things that God wants to do. I'm so grateful for that today. Let's say a prayer together. Jesus, thank you for giving us new eyes to see you with. We love you so much, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning and grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We continue with our lesson throughout the season of Lent called A Journey to Jerusalem, which is following Jesus and the disciples as they journey from the region around the Sea of Galilee down south to Jerusalem, where Jesus knows that he will be crucified. It's a tough journey to take. Along the way, we have had some interesting experiences. Last week, Jesus healed 10 lepers. And uh, let's see what Jesus is up to this week as we get closer and closer to Jerusalem. We're in Luke chapter 18, verse 35. As he approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Then he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people when they saw it, praised God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Most holy and loving God, each and every one of us are in need of some type of healing. It might be physical, it might be mental or emotional. I suspect for many of us it is spiritual. Lord, touch us in our greatest need and help us to hear your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. I ran across a story about a man named Char Charlie Boswell this week who was blinded during World War II. He had been rescuing a buddy from a burning tank. He was truly a hero. Charlie had always been a great athlete up to that point. So after the war, he took up golf. And he was astoundingly good at it, even though he was blind. In short, Charlie Boswell won the National Blind Golf Championship 16 times once shooting a score of 81. For comparison's sake, I'm a perfectly sighted golfer with glasses, and the only time I ever shoot better than 81 is when I'm playing putt-putt at Jungle Rapids. Anyway, in 1958, Charlie went to Fort Worth, Texas to receive the coveted Ben Hogan Award in honor of one of the greatest professional golfers in history. Mr. Hogan agreed to play a round of golf with Charlie. Charlie said, would you like to play for money? Hogan said, no, that wouldn't be fair. Charlie said, come on, Mr. Hogan, are you afraid to play a blind golfer? Hogan was pretty competitive. So he said, all right, I'll play you for money. How much? 
Boswell said, how about $1,000 a hole? Hogan said, that's a lot of money. How many strokes you want me to give you? Boswell said, no strokes. I'll play you heads up. Hogan said, Charlie, I can't do that. What would people think of me taking advantage of a blind man? Boswell smiled and said, don't worry about it, Mr. Hogan. Our tea time's tonight at midnight. What would happen if you lost your sight? I sometimes wonder how I would have gotten around in, back in Jesus' time if I didn't have glasses, if I didn't have access to cataract surgery. I wouldn't be able to see very far. I suppose I could probably teach and preach and feed and clothe myself, but I wouldn't be able to hunt. If I was conscripted into the army, I wouldn't be able to see the enemy coming. I kind of take it for granted, but I'm pretty dependent on these glasses. I can't begin to imagine what it must be like to have no sight at all. I haven't had the privilege of knowing too many people who were blind, but I would think you would need some assistance from time to time. And if you didn't have anyone to assist you, there would be times, especially back in Jesus' day, when you'd probably struggle. In today's text, Jesus had set his face toward Jerusalem. He set out with his disciples to walk the road from the Sea of Galilee to the capital city and to the home of the Jewish temple. And as he gets closer, he comes to the town of Jericho, which is not far from Jerusalem at all. There on the outskirts of town, a great crowd of people greet him because they'd already heard about the wonderful things that Jesus could do. Among the crowd is this blind man that the Gospel of Mark identifies as Bartimaeus. The blind man was not able to see, but he was aware that something important was happening. He heard the noise of the crowd. He stood up, reached out, grabbed someone by the arm and said, What is it? What's happening? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Bartimaeus may have been blind, but he knew who Jesus was. He'd heard all about him. Immediately he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those standing there thought he was being rude, getting out of his place. They said, oh, pipe down, old Bart. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus looked at him, saw his shabby clothing, his faltering steps, the distant look in his face, and knew that he was blind. But perhaps all of us are blind like Bartimaeus. You think about that blind man on the road, unable to find his way, uncertain about the present, uncertain about his future. Isn't that us? We are Bartimaeus. Jesus invited the blind man to come to him. In fact, he invites us all to come into his presence. Luke tells us that when Jesus heard the cries of the blind man, he stopped and commanded that he be brought to him. Jesus invites all of us to come to him. In fact, he said, Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Later, when Jesus got into Jericho, he found Zacchaeus up in a tree. And Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down out of that tree, for I must stay at your house today. That's the kind of invitation Jesus gives people everywhere he goes. On every road he traveled, come, follow me. Jesus invites us to come into his presence, to bring to him who we are and whatever might be happening to us. The door to his presence is always open. And we accept his invitation to be with him, then we're on the road that leads to life. We may not have all the answers, but we know that Jesus is the answer. We may not be all we should be, but with the help of Jesus, we will become all we can be. We may not always be on top of the world, but by the grace of God, we'll have the best of both worlds, this world and the one to come. We may sometimes lose our way, but our hands are in the hand of the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. A woodsman came upon some Boy Scouts out in the wilderness one day, and when he saw them, he said, are you lost? And they answered, we don't really know where we are, but we're not lost. We're with our scout master, and he knows the way home. When we're with our master, we'll find our way. And he invites us to be with him. But I want you to remember something else, that Jesus will meet you at the place where you hurt the most. Jesus met the blind man at the point of his greatest need. 
He said to Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? And Jesus was asking, what do you need? What's the problem? Show me where it hurts. That's the question he asks of all of us. What do you want me to do for you? What is it you really need? Is there some great hurt in your life? Some great burden that you bear? Whatever it is, you're not alone in your struggle. Christ invites you into his presence, and there he will meet you at the place where you hurt the most. Years ago, there was a professor at Canor School of Theology at Emory University in Atlanta named W.A. Smart, and he wrote a book called The Contemporary Christ. He says, Christ is our contemporary, meaning he comes among us and he meets us where we are. He understands us, whatever it is we're facing. I completely agree with the sentiment. Back when I was in college, I took a class in American Sign Language. Not for a grade, it was just for fun. And I remember about as much sign language as I do high school Spanish, which is to say, nada. Um, during the class, I remember meeting this woman, though, who'd been born deaf. But at the age of 15, she had an operation which enabled her to hear. And I asked her what it was like for her the very first time she was able to hear. And she answered, noisy. I bet. Her life suddenly became noisy. Maybe that's our problem. Perhaps there's too much going on around us and within us. Christ will meet us in the midst of that too. Preacher was at a movie one evening, one of those films on the life of Christ. And when the story came to the crucifixion scene, the preacher noticed two young women in front of him. As the nails were being driven into the hands, one of the women said to the other, let's go, this is the place where we came in. It always is, isn't it? So often it's in the depths of our experience that Christ comes in. He meets us there. But remember that Jesus, wherever he meets us, will give us a new vision. He gave the blind man a new vision. Jesus said to Bartimaeus, receive your sight, your faith has made you well. Then Luke tells us that this blind man is now able to see and he's become a follower of Jesus. He not only received his sight, more importantly, he's been given a new vision, a new vision of himself, of the world, of Jesus, of how he could follow him and where he needs to go. I think Jesus still opens blind eyes. He still offers us a new vision. And if you will accept the new vision that he offers, you're going to see things you've never seen before. I've always loved the old hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. You know that song? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Some things will grow strangely dim but some, some things will be seen more clearly. You will see, if you dare to look, more clearly the person God created you to become. In a small town, there were five men who operated bakeries all on the same street, and one put up a sign that said, Best Donuts in Town. So the others started putting up signs that read, Best Donuts in the State, Best Donuts in the Country. Best donuts in the whole world. And the last one finally put up a sign that simply said, best donuts on this street. I think you'll see a vision of your best self wherever you are. You'll see, if you dare to look, the best way you can follow Christ. You will see, if you dare to look, the things about your life you need to change in the ways God is calling you to change the world. Some see the world and say, look what the world's coming to. Others see Christ and say, look what's coming to the world. Some see things as they are and they ask why. Others see things as Christ can make them and ask why not. Some see only problems and they give up. Others see Christ as a solution and give him their lives. Some see nothing but shadows and spend their days living in the dark. Others see Christ as the light and live by the new vision that he's given them. 
Over a period of several months, a man had cataracts removed from both eyes, which is something I can relate to. He went back to his doctor for a final checkup, and the doctor handed him a bottle which contained the cataracts and said, this is the thing which kept you from seeing. The man replied, doctor, I want to thank you for giving me my sight back. I want to thank you for a new set of eyes. I'm glad I don't have my old eyes. I've seen some things lately I've never seen before. I remember being like that the first time I ever got a pair of glasses. See, Jesus, Jesus will give you new vision. You'll see some things you've never seen before. When Robert Louis Stevenson was just a boy, he was being cared for one evening by a sitter. The sun had just gone down and little Robert went into the living room and looked out into the darkness. And he, as he stood there, he saw a lamp lighter coming down the street, lighting all the street lamps. And he turned and he called to the babysitter and he said, look, there's a man out there punching holes in the darkness. There is someone who will punch the darkness right out of your life. You will see things you've never seen before. And with a new vision and the light of his love, you will find a new way. So turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Pray with me. Holy God, we thank you that you reach out to us where we need you the most. Give us new eyes to see. Give us a new vision for the way the world can be. Give us a new way of us seeing ourselves. Lord, help us to follow Jesus on the path that you have laid out for us. Help us to change the world, to be more like your kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Yes, the things of this earth will grow strangely dim, but the things of God's kingdom will become so much more clear. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may be.